Hello guys, welcome to the teaching and learning. Today lesson 25, pedagogy questions and answers. In this lesson, I'll share some more questions and tips and techniques about the pedagogy questions and answers. It will help you in the pedagogy uh, exam. So let's see what are the questions and uh, what are the important things you should know. Don't miss this. Watch till the end of the slides. Let's see the questions and the tips. So question number one, you can see on the screen, it's about the uh, learning disabilities or the uh, difficulties. You can see here, the results of a student's intelligence assessment confirm that a student is of average ability. It's proved through the assessment that the student is an average learner. The student learner learns skills, concept and instructions well. These things learns well, okay, but fails to learn. What is the problem? Now, look at this here. What fails to learn to read and write? Now, you have to identify what is the problem first. What is the question first? What thing you are going to find? Which thing you are going to answer? So, you have to... Uh, Recall these uh, type of the questions in your mind while you are attempting the exam. So here, the problem is a read and write. Despite intensive practice, now what is the most likely cause of the student's problem? Now, we know what exactly we are going to do. We are going to find the student who fails to read and write. That's the problem, okay? Now, there's a particular term in education, a student who has a difficulty in read and write, what we call, is it a being a slow learner, we cannot call it being a slow learner, we already identify it's average learner, so this is the wrong one, just a more, a low ability level, it's the same, we know it's average, it's not a low, it's average, second thing, a lack of motivation, there's a no relevancy of the motivations to write it. This is something at uh, the problem a student who is facing. This is something is a difficulty. So it is not it has it has a it has a no connection with the motivation. So the student who is able to uh, skills, concept and instructions, but he's unable or she's unable uh, to read and write. So this is called the learning difficulty. So you have to filter the information first point. Okay? You have to filter. Second thing, is there anything which is already available or mentioned in the question? Third thing, what is the, you know, the logical point which makes sense? Now, the being a slow learner, a low ability, so they have a both similarities. Because, and why they have a mention? Because they already mentioned there's the average ability. Then you have to, you know. So, in this point, I'm telling you, while you are answering, uh, or attempting the exam, you need to filter the information. This is the uh, point today you should uh, follow and I'm sure it will help you. Let's move to the second point and second question. Let's see what is about that. When a teacher asks the class to work in a groups and a task, teacher give instruction for the collaboration. A gifted and talented student asked the teacher if she could work on her own. Now she said or that means she denies, I cannot work in a group. Oh, I want to work in alone. Now, the student claimed that the group hinders, means making the difficulty and problems, her thinking and achievement. So she gave a reason that why I want to work, uh, and, uh, work alone because she has a problem and difficulties during the lesson. So in situation, what the teacher has to do? Now, what is the best response of the teacher? First thing, okay, it's already assigned the collaborative activity. So there should be no chance to work an individual. When the task has been assigned, it's a collaboration. Then why students? It's not a demanding, okay, that's it. The teacher has to plan. Teacher has to decide, okay. Not a student, okay, this one. So this is the point, okay. To agree with the students, of course not. To exclude. So this is something, you know, that's funny. To agree with the student, anyway, then there's no group work. 
I'll group work. So I'll not read the rest of the answer. That's an appropriate level. Okay. To agree with the students. No. Because if it is agreed, then that's not the group work. First thing. To insist that is a no. Why insist the students? Okay. This, there is no choice of that when you are making, okay, that you have to force or you have to, you know, that's an, to support the lower level. Instead. It's not a defined, okay, that even it's a lower level, they are working for the collaboration, which is good for the lower level. Now, you have to motivate, you have to explain the students that there is a variety of the skills while you are sharing to the students your ideas, there's a lot of chances to learn more. So, to explain to the students that they will learn a variety of skills beyond the task of completion when they work with others so this is the answer okay so you have to explain you have to you know why you want you have assigned the group work and what is the uh, advantages of the group work and uh, how it will beneficial how will it help enhance the knowledge okay so this is another to modify group arrangement so that the student is placed in a group that now teacher modified already based on what assessment can be cat for, can be internal assessment, can be external assessment. That's one. Now, if she wants to modify based on that, then every student has, I do not want to sit with this one. I do not want to sit this one. So this will be something uh, messy and something, you know, a very, uh, what we call an ethical attitude towards the students. And that's why. So you have to be careful for that one. We are filtering the information into the uh, lesson. So. This is the filtration to explain to motivate the sun. Second thing, uh, which is I love this one and uh, I really, really uh, um, I, I focus on this point while I'm teaching in the classroom that what is the difference between these things, okay. Question number three, after teaching the steps of conducting a research, the science teacher asked the students to do their own research. He, she, then read their work, which of the following statement is the best feedback to give the student. So teacher assigned about the research work. Now, what is the teacher is going to? Teacher is providing the feedback now. Now, what feedback she provided? Okay, let's see. Your research is weak and you need to rearrange the result in a logical way. Rearrange the second thing. And the second thing is weak. Is it a feedback? Disappoint. My question is to you. Second thing. A good try, but your research needs to improve. Needs to be improved. Good try. Is it a feedback? Again. Okay. I'm, I'm just wondering. Is it a feedback? Please review. You are requesting to review. Okay. The research instruction I shared with you at the beginning of the unit. Okay? So you are requesting to review. Okay. Then. Is it a feedback? Now check is it if it is a feedback okay what type of feedback you are providing okay. now one thing you remember whenever you are providing the feedback the feedback should be constructive and it must contain the next step it must uh, a clear or uh, suggest the next step to the what will be the next what the student has to do should be very clear that is called the feedback your research would be better if you provide your conclusion, he or she, the teacher, identify that where is the problem. The problem is conclusion and what she wants to, evidence. So next step will be the evidence. Okay. So it's clearly identified that the next level is the conclusion if you have a provide this one. However, let's back to the three one. Weak, good try and please. First thing, it's not a feedback. Feedback should be constructive feedback which gives the next level or next step of the students. Weak, good try, please review. These can be request, these can be criticism, good try can be praise or something. So there's a big difference between praise, between criticism and request. So in my opinion, and uh, after you know the search, these things are the opinions and request, okay? So that's not a constructive feedback. So feedback should be the advice, the tips, what is the next? It should be a constructive. Now common types of the feedback, praise, we always mistake it. Sometimes we say good, sometimes we say very good, sometimes we say excellent, sometimes we say fabulous, sometimes we say bravo. Let me clear, 
these are not our feedbacks these are the words we use for the praise feedback should be constructive that means it explains what is the next level of the what the student has to do if you are praising means everything is fine and you have done fantastic job of that one okay fantastic but what you have done if there's something okay you want to provide suggestion if you are giving a weak you are criticizing you okay you pro you uh wrote your comment weak but what does it mean weak does the parent understand students understand what they have to do of course not so i will tell you what are the common and uh, practice of the classroom these things well done lovely super magnificent awesome brilliant delight okay this one i use when i praise for somebody so that these words are very good for the praise but useless for the constructive feedback so i'll be telling you in the next lesson as well as you know that uh, avoid writing these words okay if you want to write okay this one but there should be a next step what the students should do and the parents should understand what their children has to do hope that you enjoyed this lesson if you have any question you can write in the comment box we'll be meeting in the next lesson with a new topic and new questions thank you so much stay blessed and stay safe